Motor Week is made possible by Lucas Oil, TireRack.com, and RockAuto.com. We live in a time where we want what we want, and we want a little bit of everything. Performance car makers like BMW, Mercedes, and Porsche have been accommodating of late by making tweener cars, which offer most of the performance of their high-end track stars with the everyday drivability of their base level counterparts. Well, now Lamborghini is doing the same thing with this Huracan Technica. And they flew me out to Valencia, Spain to put its tweener traits to the test. Over the last eight years, Lamborghini has offered seemingly endless Huracan variants, all upping the performance bar, eventually reaching a level never before seen from the Italian brand with a hardcore track version dubbed the STO. Well, this 2023 Huracan Technica is an STO in sheep's clothing and Lamborghini's version of a sleeper. No Lambo could ever be described as subtle, but compared to the STO, the Technica is as close as it gets. The massive rear wing is gone and so are the front air ducts. Still, from a design standpoint, this isn't your standard issue Huracan. The body receives aggressive front and rear touches, which are also functional, resulting in 35% more downforce and 20% less drag than the rear drive Evo. The interior of my test car is heavy on the STO vibes, with carbon fiber door panels, sports seats, and a carpetless floor. But these are options based on what Lamborghini thinks most buyers will prefer. Standard Technicas come comfier with more luxurious materials. Riding midship is the Huracan's calling card, a naturally aspirated 5.2 liter V10, churning out 631 horsepower and over 400 pound-feet of torque, the same as in the STO. Similarly, power travels to the rear wheels via seven-speed dual-clutch automatic. Fortunately, I didn't have to wait long to confirm these numbers, as the circuit Ricardo Tormo was open and accepting new rubber. So I'm in sport mode now, which is the middle of the three driving modes, Strata for street, sport, self-explanatory, and of course, Corsa for track work. Keeping it in sport though out here on the track. It'll actually shift on its own. You don't have to go up in the manual. But if I go into Corsa here, now I'm shifting on my own. Four, three, two with the paddles. Great paddle feel. Shifts come in an instant. <laughs> and with each downshift, just a beautiful song. So the top speed of this thing is actually a little over 200 miles per hour, which is higher than the STO. But again, it doesn't have that massive rear wing holding it down. I gotta say, I'm really enjoying just kind of driving around the track at a relaxed pace because I'm learning a lot about the car. If you just keep to your line, focus on your braking zones, making sure you're getting on the throttle at the right time, steering, all the little things, you realize you're actually going really fast, a lot faster than you think you are. And that's a testament to how good this car is on the track because I, I feel like I'm going faster than I could in probably 99% of cars that I drive on the racetrack. But I feel just as comfortable as I would in, in, in you know, like maybe a golf or something like that. Credit for that goes to Lamborghini's vehicle dynamics processor, known as LDVI. Put simply, it's an onboard computer that's constantly at work, helping you feel like a superhero on the racetrack. Of course, the other half of the Technica's tale is its street manners, which I became well acquainted with on the tight and winding roads outside Valencia. I don't get to drive Lambos on the street very often. I'm usually confined to the track, and I, I realize that sounds like a humble brag, but this is pretty cool and important with this car because this is supposed to bridge the gap between the base level Evo and the super high performance STO. As far as daily comfort, I mean, I know not many people are gonna daily their Lamborghini Huracan, but things like 
uh, just general engine noise coming in from the back. I mean, even in strata mode, it sounds like a party's going on back there, but then you go up into sport and get into it a little bit. It just turns on to a full on rager, man. And then of course the after party with all the nice cracks and pops. So you hear things like engine noises, transmission noises. Actually, when you get on the brakes, you can hear pad hitting rotor, which is cool if you're into that sort of thing, you know they're working. So this does have four wheel steering like the STO and you feel it in these tight corners. Really shortens that wheelbase effectively. So here it comes around, you can feel the rear end coming out, not in like a scary, it's gonna get away from you way, but in like a, oh, I'm getting help around this corner kind of way. The STO and the Technica I think now falls in this category. You have to push it pretty hard to get it to respond the way that really brings out the best in the car. I think at these kind of speeds, it's fun and all, but if you really are looking for something that's more suited for a comfortable drive on a back road, the Technica, I don't think that's it. I think it's a really great car. It's a fun car to drive for me. I think it's the best value in the Huracan lineup, but it's not for everyone. That engine noise, on the other hand, is for everyone. The Technica is the second to last Huracan model Lamborghini will offer. And despite the modern appearance and advanced performance electronics, it feels a lot like a classic Italian exotic. Coming to the States later this year, the Lamborghini Huracan Technica starts just under $245,000. Steep but a bargain compared to the $333,000 STO. Luckily, our reviews are free of charge, and we'll have more on the Technica and others soon on MotorWeek.